welcome to night number 88 of History Bedtime Stories in bed in our pajamas. And tonight we're talking about whalebacks. Now, not the big mammal that you see in the ocean. We've never had whales in the Great Lakes, but whaleback boats. These vessels were produced in the Great Lakes between 1887 and 1898. And the last one went out of service in the 1950s. So less than a hundred years they were produced and active on the Great Lakes, but there remains some wonderful images and memories, and of course, postcards of the whalebacks. This is a card from my collection, postmarked 1911, and it shows two whalebacks docked on the Detroit River, that little strip of land there in the back, that's Belle Isle. Now, if you can't figure it out from this image, the reason it's called a whaleback is its shape. The one farther into the river, is not loaded down yet, so it's sitting very high. Its curved, cigar, cylindrical shape allows for it to be loaded down with freight, ride lower in the water, and have the appearance of a whale's back breaching the top of the water. The turrets, which in this postcard are green, would contain the decks and cabins for the crew. This whaleback design was the brainchild of Captain Alexander McDougall. Born in Scotland, he immigrated to America, and he was a Great Lakes captain, a seaman, and a shipbuilder. He comes up with the uh, idea for the whaleback because as the 1880s are really pulling away from schooners and sailing ships towards steam-powered or coal-powered vessels, Vessel size was limited by the waterways and the locks. So it was common practice for barges or consorts to be pulled or pushed by powered vessels through the Great Lakes, through the Detroit River, through Lake St. Clair, and then be able to detach in order to make their way through the lock systems or in order to navigate shallows. Because of this, there was a really big problem. Not all ships, not all barges, were easy to pull through water. They would track off, they would be affected by waves and currents, and sometimes they would create a backsplash that caused problems for the towing vessel. He envisions this rounded hull from the top right down to the bottom, tapered at both ends, to be able to have waves go right over it instead of affect and pull or push it. As he's designing this vessel, he comes to realize it's gonna to need to be very strong. So it's made of double riveted steel plates attached to a steel skeleton. Its cylindrical cigar shape has a very smooth exterior, allowing it to easily be pulled through the water with very little drag. However, a major design flaw for the whalebacks was that the hatch for loading and unloading freight, and generally that was grain or iron ore for the whalebacks, was small. It was small because that curved structure required it to be small in order to be watertight. Well, a small hatch means slow loading and slow unloading, which was eventually the downfall of the vessels. By 1940, they are all gone, but the most famous of all of the whalebacks was actually not a freight vessel, it was a passenger vessel. It was used to take people to the Chicago World's Fair, the Chicago Columbian Exposition, by having docks built on top of the whaleback frame. That vessel only lasted until the 1930s, and sadly, all we have today is photos. I hope you are enjoying History Bedtime Stories. If you are, give us a like and tag a friend in the comments section below. If you do, we're gonna enter you into a raffle and award three people some really cool Detroit vinyl stickers as a thank you. Wash your hands, we'll see you tomorrow night.